Hi, it's Nick from The Run Testers, and this is our review of the Solomon S-Lab Phantasm. The Phantasm is the new uh, road racing flat from Salomon. It does not have a carbon plate. That's the first thing to note. It's kind of more of a traditional style racing flat. Uh, it was kind of launched when uh, Killian Janay attempted to break the 24 hour record on a very, very cold day in a way it looked like. Um, and it's actually going to be coming out on February 21st. It costs £165 in the UK and $180 in the US. It has a 6mm drop with a kind of a heel height of 20mm and 4 foot of 14mm. And the weight's kind of listed at just under 200 grams. Uh, my UK size 9 came in at 205 grams, which is 7.2 ounces. Uh, so it's a really lightweight shoe, uh, lighter than I think nearly all the carbon plate shoes released last year. It's not quite as light as the Vaporfly Next Percent or kind of more traditional racing flats, uh, which usually come in under 200 grams. So the design of the shoe, we might as well start with the upper, um, which is really, you know, nails the kind of barely there kind of style you get with racing flats. Um, it's, you know, it's a mesh upper, it's a TPU mesh. It seems quite strong, like it seems quite rugged, but it is, you know, completely see-through basically um, and, um, you know, very breathable, drains really quickly and also dries really quickly. I've pretty much used this shoe exclusively in the wet and it, I can say it does dry really quickly. Um, it's got kind of flat laces, quite good for a lockdown fit around here. It's a reasonably narrow shoe. Um, I went true to size in this shoe and it was fine. Uh, I'd say it's quite narrow, maybe slightly long. Um, if you do have high arches or a really um, wide foot, you might look into sizing up, but it fit true to size for me um, and was comfortable. Uh, around the back of the upper, there's you know nothing going on here. It's like a very, very tiny slither of cushioning around the Achilles, but really the whole upper screams a kind of minimalist, lightweight racing flat that this is. The midsole of the shoe is uh, so, um, Salomon's Energy Surge Foam, which is kind of a mix of EVA and uh, Alephin foams. Um, so it's not like really soft and squishy like a Piba foam. Uh, it's not really like a bounce, even like kind of TPU foams I've tried. But um, it is, I'd say, quite similar in feel to me on the ride as um, the kind of nitrogen infused EVA of something like the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. And I'd say there's a reasonable amount of cushioning here, um, you know, even though it's much lower profile than you're finding on kind of high stack races these days. The big thing that isn't there is a carbon plate, um, although this is still quite a stiff shoe, as you can see. Um, Solomon have decided against putting one of those in, um, which is interesting, obviously, in this current time where every shoe has a carbon plate. Then it's got, but what it has kind of taken from these kind of very popular, you know, new style of super shoes is a kind of rocker, which um, uh, Solomon are calling a reverse camber. Again, it's just kind of the idea get you, keep you onto that forefoot and get you kind of, you know, flying off your toes and carrying on racing as fast as you can. The outsole um, is really good, I'm going to say. Uh, this is um, Solomon's Contagrip FA kind of rubber material on the outsole here. It's a reasonable amount of it here, but it's quite a thin layer. Clearly hasn't added much weight to the shoe, but this grips superbly well. Like, um, I've run in the snow in this in the UK. It's quite rare snowy days here. Or, like I say, consistently on wet pavements, some of them slightly icy. I haven't had the slightest bit of problems with grip. The only thing I will say is these kind of long lines of kind of uh, the gaps in the rubber do pick up very small pebbles occasionally. But yeah, it's meant to be a road racing shoe, so you won't be encountering too much of that. So the first thing I'm going to say about the running performance is that this shoe was a pleasant surprise for me in that it wasn't unduly firm. Basically, you know, it's quite low profile, stack of cushioning that isn't peeb or anything like that. I thought, you know, this is an old style racing flat, this is going to be pretty firm. And, you know, which has its place, but it's not really a kind of shoe I've been using a lot lately. But I wouldn't say that's... This is a really firm shoe at all. In fact, it's not a harsh ride at all. Like I say, it is quite similar for me to the kind of Brooks Superior Tempo. The rocker, I guess, helps ease some of that harshness out of the ride, perhaps as well. But you know, there's a reasonable stack of foam here. This EVA or Leffin mix is comfortable to me. Um, it's not like a bouncy or squishy ride at all. I will say that it's much more kind of firm, responsive, feel for the ground, but with that kind of you know little rocker effect. But yeah, it isn't harsh. I've 
So I've done at 80k in the shoe, and I've done it in not that many runs. I've done a lot of long, hard sessions in the shoe. I think longest run in it was about 24k, uh, which was a mix of snow, and then I had to go on the treadmill for like the last bit of it, just because it did get too icy for any shoes, um, certainly road races. Um, and then um, I've done like kind of a 19k kind of workout in it. I've done a 17k workout in it, a kind of a long hill reps workout, and I've never felt that my legs have been really beaten up like they would kind of in the old days of racing flats um so yeah i do think if you're worried it's going to be a really firm harsh old style flat i don't think that's what this is i think it's a slight tweak on that formula to be a bit more forgiving in the style of these kind of modern shoes i'll also say the decision not to put a plate in it does pay dividends because there are some shoes of this kind of lower profile like ons cloud boom or cloud Fash, that once you put the plate in them they're just really firm harsh rides and if there'd been a plate in this maybe that would have been the case here as well that isn't what has happened it's you know it's quite a nice ride um i think it's probably cushioned enough to go for marathon for some people if you know you did want to use this style of shoe but um I probably wouldn't run for 24 hours on it on a frozen track, but then I wouldn't do that in any shoe, so that's fair enough. So like I said, I've done a lot of hard work. Obviously, it's designed for speed running, and I've done a lot of fast running in this. I did kind of a long session of 24 times, 60 seconds on, 30 seconds off, and then a progression 3K at the end of that. And then I did another session today, which I'm still feeling the effects of, where I did a kind of a 3K at 3.30 per K, eight 800 meters at um, kind of 2.30 and then another 3k at 3.30 per k um, and it was a really hard day out there you know, it was a tough session the 800s were murder on the legs but what really surprised me was how comfortable and smooth I felt in that kind of the second 3k afterwards which is 3.30 which is my kind of my target marathon pace and this you know obviously <laughs> obviously mostly down to fitness and training but the shoe does protect the legs in those long sessions in a similar way that I found with kind of other, super, you know, the modern super shoe out there, which is a lot of it is about protecting your legs so you're still strong and efficient at the end of your runs. So I was really surprised and impressed by that from this shoe. So even over the kind of 25k run, like I say, some of that wasn't a treadmill, which distorts it a little bit because you're running on a, you know, padded surface. Um, finishing the run the next day i didn't feel any you know different in my legs than i would to had i taken out like something like the insulcony endorphin speed of its plate or a full carbon racer um so yeah that's a big plus point to the phantasm it is kind of a racing flat weight and style and kind of geometry and fit and you know upper and everything but it's not smashing your legs in the way that they kind of used to a little bit more i think um those kind of classic racing flats where you would have a even more feel for the ground than you get with this shoe because there is this kind of cushioning but yeah, you know, in, in, sometimes in a bad way where you, know, you really feel the ground and then the next day after a training session, your legs are knackered. The verdict on the Phantasm is actually a little bit tough to kind of nail down because in a vacuum, this is a really good shoe. Um, like I say, it's, it's pretty comfortable, it's fast, it's very light, it's got everything going for it to be a kind of really quick racing shoe and even actually a fast training shoe. I think it'd be quite durable and like I say, I think you can put your session in and recover quite quickly, bounce back for your next one. It's not trashing your legs like the on cloud flash did, for example, when I was testing that out. Uh, and it's just nice maybe to see like a, you know, a kind of a new top flight racing option that isn't the kind of carbon shoe or the high stack of very soft cushioning coming out, you know, in the year 2021, who'd have thought. But um, at the same time, all those super shoes do exist. And as much as I like this shoe, uh, I don't like it as much as the Alphalar, the Vaporfly. If I was going for my A race tomorrow, I'd be using a shoe with that squishy foam, with the carbon plate, to protect my legs even more, to help me propel forward and smash PBs, or in training, things like the Saucony Endorphin Speed, the Hocker Rocket X, they have the plates. Uh, one's obviously a nylon plate in the speed, but they've got a bigger stack of cushioning, but they still kind of perform in the same way. You still get the speed out of them that you're getting from this shoe, but with an extra bit of kind of assistance, I guess, from the cushioning and the plate, um, which I think puts the Phantasm in a slightly awkward position, um, especially as it is 165 pounds. Like, um, that's more than the Endorphin Speed. It's a lot more than the Hocker Rocket X, which is 140 pounds. It's not far off the Adios Pro, which is obviously never available, but when it is, you know, that's a bona fide super shoe with the plate, with the soft stack. You, want, you wouldn't be able to use it necessarily for as much running as this. It probably won't be as durable, but it is going to be better, I think, for a half marathon and a marathon. Um, so yeah, it's kind of where this fits. Obviously, the slightly lower stack will appeal to a lot of people, I think. Um, and I think 20 million means it's legal for track racing. So that's quite nice if you don't want to use you know, kind of track spikes. Um, I do think I like it as much as uh, maybe something like the Asics Meta Race, which I really like for short races. Um, I like it more than some of those other low-profile carbon races like the On, like the Ons and the Hocker Rocket, uh, Carbon Rocket, the older one that's been replaced now. 
but I don't like it as much as the Endorphin Speed or the Hocker Rocket X. Both cheaper, both with plates, both have stood up to a lot of running for me. So yeah, I do, like I say, I find it hard to place this shoe. I'm sure there are runners out there who have not have no truck with this new revolution of high-stack shoes with carbon plates, um, in which case, this is a lovely option to have. Uh, I do think it's a slight upgrade on the classic racing flat. You are a bit more protected, you have got that rocker, um, and yeah, it would be a good long-distance racing option if you're completely staying away from those shoes. Maybe you're worried that they're going to get banned down the line, and none of these times will mean anything. All these times we've been running for the last couple of years, in which case, the Phantasm might be nice. However, for me, it will, might, I might use it occasionally for speed sessions, just have that kind of slightly greater feel for the ground and, the, and know that I'm not using a plate for a session here and there, which is obviously quite a nice feeling when you still hit your session goals and you're not using a super shoe. But at the end of the day, uh, if it was my money, I wouldn't be spending it on the Phantasm. Uh, I'd, if I was only going to spend up to 165, I'd buy the Endorphin Speed or the Hocker Rocket X. And if it was money was no object, I'd be buying one of the probably the Nikes as my A racer um, or maybe the Adidas if you just want to spend under 100, 200 pounds. So yeah, really nice shoe. Fortunately, uh, I think it's a little bit outgunned still in the, in the current landscape. That's it guys, that is our review of the Solomon Phantasm. Um, if you tried it, let us know uh, in the comments below. What do you think of this shoe? Are you happy to see kind of you know brands bringing out shoes that haven't got carbon plates in them? Let us know what your favorite racer is right now, what you'll be using when races return this year. And yeah, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, wherever it is, um, and you'll get notified when we launch another video. And we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.